there, this is Miss Caitlin from Vivo Kids Art Academy, and I'm here to talk to you about our Around the World series. In our series, we visit the seven continents of the world, different countries, and their famous landmarks. Now, I just wanted to give you a little taste of how this series usually runs, so I've prepared a special project for us today. We're going to take a very quick trip to the United States and visit the Statue of Liberty in New York, New York. So let me go ahead and show you my desk, and maybe you can gather some of these materials. All right, so let's take a look here. Some different materials that you're going to need. You're going to need a thick piece of paper, of course, something that can really handle watercolor. Um, so maybe watercolor paper or Bristol paper. You're also going to need a pencil, an eraser, obviously, and you're going to need scissors and glue because the Statue of Liberty, we actually are going to cut out from a piece of dark colored paper. You could use black or blue, whatever you've got. You're going to need watercolors, a permanent marker of some kind. I really recommend a Prismacolor or a Copic marker, something that's really going to stick for your city skyline in the background. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and just clear some of these items away. You can pause the video at any point if you just want to take your time on a certain part. There's no rush whatsoever because I'm just going to go through this quickly to give you, again, just a little taste of how this will usually run in our class. So first, let's start off with our paper. And this technically would be a practice draw, or we can just jump right into it today and be a final draw. Now, as I said, I'm gonna jump into this really quick, but I want you to use a pencil so that you can kind of sketch things out as you go. Now, because I want you to really be able to see my lines, I'm gonna be drawing with a Sharpie today, just so that you can see. So take your watercolor paper, once you have it all ready, or your Bristol paper, whatever it is that you're going to be using, and we're going to first draw a horizon line or really just a ground line so that we can start the city skyline of New York. So again, paper horizontal, and we want it to start maybe right about here, kind of in the middle. So take your pencil and draw a really long horizontal line all the way across your paper. From here, you could look up a reference photo of what the New York skyline looks like um, at the view of the Statue of Liberty. So we're kind of looking at the Statue of Liberty from a three-quarter view, which means it's going to look, or the skyline is going to look different, again, depending on which way you're viewing the sky, or the statue. So you can look at a reference photo and draw that in. I'm just drawing it in really quickly. For the skyline, it's really easy to sort of think about the buildings as just making rectangles over and over. Sometimes the shape might be different depending on the building, like for example, there's this really tall building here, and there are other ones that kind of come around. And if you look at cities in real life, they have lots of variety. No two buildings are exactly the same. And again, for this New York skyline, it's pretty recognizable. Okay. I'm going to continue all the way over. And there we go. Now at this point, this is actually all we need for this part of our picture. So I would recommend you outline that with a Sharpie. And then you're going to fill this whole thing in with black, which is what I'm going to do now. Now I'm going to use a Mr. Sketch Marker because that's what I have. It's got a pretty wide tip, which means it's going to make filling this area in really quick, but it's not waterproof. So when I go to do my watercolor later, I will have to be very careful about where I'm painting. So if you are in the same position, just keep that in mind. Now during our class, when we're learning about a landmark or a location, usually I will share the map of the country that we're visiting. So I'd show you a map of the United States, I'd tell you facts like, well, who thinks they know how many states are in the United States? And then if somebody doesn't know, I might just tell them, but that one I think is a little bit of an easier one, an easier question. I'll ask or tell everyone things about the flag. So I would talk about, you know, how many stars are on the American flag, who thinks they know how many stripes are on it, and who knows why, as well as discuss the different colors. And generally, just discuss the symbolism of what the flag means for that country, or how it has kind of developed a meaning over time, because that happens a lot too. A flag might start out a certain way and have certain meanings attached to it, but 
As you know, a country changes, and as people change, so do the symbols and meanings. Even the American flag has changed dramatically over its several years. Maybe not the stripes, but how many stars are on it for sure. All right, so as you're filling this in, I highly recommend when you're using a marker, especially a wide tipped one like this. This one is a chisel tip, you can see. Try and do long strokes as best as you can. This is gonna help your picture stay neat. It's also gonna help you just go a little faster. Though I understand if it's kinda tricky to do, if you have something like a small Sharpie or a small marker that you're trying to work with. Okay. Now, depending on the kind of marker you're using, like a Sharpie sometimes, or even a Prismacolor or a Copic marker, which are a little bit more expensive, but they're worth it, in my opinion. You might notice that with Mr. Sketch markers, or even Crayola markers, you see a lot of your strokes. But with those other ones, the Prisma and the Copic, the color starts to kind of blend together. So you don't see your strokes as much. So you end up with this very solid look. All right, there's the cityscape. You can feel free to add in little windows or like lights with a, again, a paint pen or maybe even like a yellow or white gel pen, but this will do for now. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with filling in our watercolor area. So we're gonna do our sunset and our kind of water. So the Statue of Liberty is actually on this island. Just getting my brush nice and wet. Make sure you get a really big brush because we're filling in a big area. All right, there we go. And I'm gonna start with the sky. I like going from top to bottom. Now for the sky, I highly recommend doing a, a very deep colored red or just any red that you have because it's going to make your letters for when you write out the United States, once it's dry, really stand out. Now the shine from the water is kind of reflecting off of my light here, and that's okay. But make sure that you're just being careful, filling everything in, and that your color is nice and deep. I'm gonna get my brush nice and wet again, need more water. I'm gonna try this red and see. That one there's a red orange. This one I think is my regular red. It's a little better. There we go. Now as you're painting, reminder, be careful. If you notice little like um, sprinkles or little flecks of paper kind of, you know, coming off, that is your paper trying to tell you, hey, I think I'm gonna tear because there's so much water on me right now. So just kind of wait for that to dry before working on it anymore. In fact, if you have little puddles on your paper, I recommend you getting a paper towel and just gently removing those. So just tap, tap, tap the paper. You can see I'm also doing extremely long strokes so that I get that color nice and even. All right, I'm gonna do a little bit of orange in between these spots here. You can switch to a medium brush to do this. No biggie. And just kind of fill that in. To blend the red and the orange, you just carefully take your brush with some orange paint on it, and you kind of just drag your brush over that spot where they meet a couple times. All right, getting in between these little buildings. If you did your entire cityscape here with a permanent marker, you could probably just paint right over it. But because I did Mr. Sketch Marker, I have to be really careful so that it doesn't accidentally blend away with the water. Thankfully, my Sharpie outline is doing a really good job of protecting it. All right, as we're working, I will tell you a little more about the Statue of Liberty. Now, the Statue of Liberty is really, really tall. People usually think it's taller than it is. I actually thought it was much taller in real life. but. The Statue of Liberty, from its base to the very, very top at the flame, it is 
305 feet tall. Just still a large statue. I usually, when I was younger, I thought it was bigger though. Now this statue is considered to be a gift from France to the United States as a symbol of their friendship. But how did they get the statue all the way from France to the United States? How did they do that? Well, first it was constructed in France. So the artists and the engineers got together and they built it in France completely first. And then when it was time to ship it away and give it to the United States, they had to break it all down into pieces. So they broke it down into about 350 individual pieces and then shipped them off through the Atlantic Ocean. It had to go into 214 crates. Now you can imagine those are pretty big pieces. And the pieces all arrived in about 1885 and all the people in America had to reassemble it where it stands today, on the island of New York City. All right, so there is our sky all complete. Let's go ahead and just fill in our water. Pick a very deep blue, the darkest blue you have. And if you don't have a dark blue, you can be very careful and mix a little bit of purple into it to get it to be a darker hue. However, if you want it to be a little bit more muted, maybe more like something an indigo color, which is a very dark blue, you could use just a tiny bit of black and fill that all in. All right, so I'm picking up this blue here. It's a very lovely color. And again, doing as long of strokes as I can. Not really worrying if my table gets too, too dirty. I am still trying to be careful, but I can always clean that up later. All right, so you can make this darker if you want. I think you get the idea, get this nice and deep and dark. And now we're gonna let this dry. And while we're letting that dry, we would work on our silhouette of the Statue of Liberty. Now, again, this is just sort of to be an example. So I'm gonna just set this off to the side and oh my goodness, you can see we've got quite of a mess, but we're gonna clean that up later. And we are going to take out our dark paper. Now you can see already I have prepared the silhouette. If you want to learn more about how to draw silhouettes, I recommend joining our FIBO uh, village or join our classes on FIBOKidsArtAcademy.com. We cover that a little bit more in our classes. So I would encourage you to either look at a actual image of the Statue of Liberty, draw her out completely first, or at least draw her basic shapes and her contour lines, and then you can cut around that shape to create the silhouette on the dark paper. Erase the pencil lines that are left over, and then you just get a blank Statue of Liberty on the inside. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and take my scissors and cut this out. Again, if you wanna take the time to pause the video and do all of that before continuing, you can. No worries, this, this is for you to create. No need to feel rushed. And as you're cutting, try and stay as close to your lines as possible. You'll notice as you start to get into the areas like the little crown or around the flame, it can get a little tricky. And if you have really large pieces of scrap paper, highly recommend saving them. I have used lots of scrap paper that has just been left over for other art projects and personal projects. Otherwise, if you have little tiny pieces of scrap paper or you, know, you don't want to save the scrap paper, do recycle them. All right, this is the part where it gets a little tricky into these little areas here. Now I'm doing this really fast so that you can see what it's going to look like in general at the end, but you should definitely take your time when going through these parts. Okay, again, just being very careful. Got a little spot right there to cut out. Again, just working as I go around. Now, sometimes when you're cutting things out, it might be useful to cut off extra paper, especially if you're going to areas that are kind of detailed. So that way you don't have to worry about, you know, oh, I have to go around and all this paper's in my way. 
We'll just solve that problem right here, right now. All right, there we go. The Statue of Liberty is made out of copper, which is usually this bronze material. But you'll probably know if you've ever seen a real life picture of the Statue of Liberty today, it's green. That's because copper sort of oxidizes. Um, there's probably a much more advanced chemical sort of reaction that you could look up online. I'm not a scientist, unfortunately, I'm an artist. I would encourage you to check that out and see why it has exactly turned green, but copper usually turns green or turns like this bluish green over time. So that's why she's the color she is today. Also fun fact, her flame, I know it's upside down right now, but her flame on the statue today is actually not the original one. The original was copper also and had lights on the inside so that it could, you know, look like a flame during the night. But because it was made out of this copper and because the Statue of Liberty is so old, the people who are taking care of her and making sure that, you know, she stays really nice over time, they came to realize, I don't think there's a way for us to fix this. It's too fragile. If we try to do anything, it'll break. So the flame has been replaced. Everything else is the original statue. So that's the only major difference between what the statue used to look like or the original different pieces. All right, I'm gonna gather all these little pieces of scrap paper and just set those off to the side. I'll recycle them or throw them out later. And what we would do now is we would take our Statue of Liberty, put some glue on the back and stick her down. Again, I know, I know our desk is getting pretty messy right now. And because of the size of my Statue of Liberty, her flame is just gonna go ever so slightly off the edge of the paper, which is fine. I think it actually looks kind of nice that way. I'm gonna go ahead and set her off to the side here. So we kind of have this rule of thirds composition where we set something that's not directly in the center. It's either to the right or the left. All right. Now, I think this part is still a little wet, but I think it's dry enough that I can show you, you know, how to use your different paint markers. So I'm gonna go ahead and take out my paint marker. And as I said, you could take either the same color paint marker and add in different, like, you know, windows and structures, something to the effect of what it looks like in our example here. Again, that's all kind of extra stuff, but you wanna write very neatly at the top, the country. You could put very tiny letters, the United States. And depending on your marker, E, S, you might have to go over that a few times. For me, I actually went over this a couple of times because again, my marker is very thin, as you can see, to really get that brightness and to get the thickness. Same thing for down here. You can write in the Statue of Liberty, however large you like. Sorry, Phoebe, almost covered you up there. But you may have to go over it a couple of times just so that it really stands out. In fact, right now, I think you might be having a difficult time seeing it. We'll still write it in so that I have it for later. Statue of Liberty. Liberty. You can write these letters however you like. If you want to do cursive for the United States at the top, you can. If you want to do print for the bottom, you can. Have a lot of fun experimenting with the different typefaces. You can also add in shading in some areas if you want to be more advanced, like you could add in more black towards the bottom to sort of give the illusion of the um, cityscape reflecting in the water. You could even add in like little highlights to the Statue of Liberty. Now that just about does it for this example project. I hope you have a lot of fun making it for yourself. 
If you want to learn more about different countries and different landmarks, be sure to check our Around the World series out. You can look it up at FeboKidsArtAcademy.com. I know you want to be a part of it, so sign up today, and I'll look forward to seeing you in class. I'll see you all again very soon, so bye for now.